each year. There are certain species of fish that swim upstream to the place of their birth in order to give birth to the next generation of fish. And so with great difficulty, they, they travel great distances, struggling against the current, battling through turbulent waters, trying to avoid predators, relentlessly driven on with one objective, and that is to complete their mission. And some people have compared that journey of those fish to the Christian life that we live while we are here on this earth. Because we're told in 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 2, that all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Many times we find ourselves swimming upstream, swimming against the current of the prevailing opinions and the perspectives of this world. We find ourselves living in a way that cuts across the grain of the majority of, of people around us. And because of those differences, sometimes they bristle up in anger, don't they? And so we find ourselves in struggles, and we find ourselves in disagreements, even experiencing persecution just because we seek to honor our Lord. We are swimming upstream, while the people of this world are drifting downstream. And perhaps contrary to, to what we thought the way things would be when we first trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, living for him seems to have, seems to become more difficult, hasn't it? There, it seems it's more demanding, more demanding as time has gone by and, and we have matured and, and we have deepened in our commitment to him. And though now, in Christ, we have a new nature, though now we have the Spirit of God dwelling within us, though we rest in His unfailing love for us, though we are assured of our eternal salvation, in spite of all of these things, in spite of all of these blessings, Still, there are times when we are influenced by the world around us and we are influenced by the desires of our flesh within us. And Satan seeks to use those enticements. He, he seeks to use those temptations, those weaknesses, hoping to make us ineffective for Christ, hoping that we will dishonor our Lord in some way. And sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Yet, we relentlessly press on. We continue to swim upstream, knowing that through Christ, in the end, we will be victorious. We will reach our home in glory. But for now, for now, more times than not, life is a struggle. A struggle that it seems the people in the church in the city of Corinth had abandoned. But there is a lesson that we can learn, a lesson that the church today can learn from their situation. And there is a lesson here for each of us. Well, many of them were Christians, but they were drifting downstream. They were drifting downstream with the rest of the world instead of swimming upstream. And so in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul says to them, 
brothers and sisters in Christ, fellow believers, I stand together with you in the faith as your brother in Christ, but I could not speak to you the way that I wanted to speak to you as, as I would speak to spiritual men and women, pneumatikos in Greek as to those who are characterized by the Spirit of God, as to those who are being led and guided by Him. He says, but I, need, I needed to speak to you then as, as I would speak to men of flesh, sakinos in Greek, the way that I would speak to worldly men and women, as if you're not even saved because... You are dominated by your sinful behavior. So, I must speak to you as I would speak to infants in Christ. Nepios in Greek. As those who are without spiritual maturity. As those who are like infants, selfishly wanting their own way. As James said in James 1.25, they had become forgetful hearers of the Word of God. They didn't apply the truth of the Word to their lives like many people today. They didn't obey the truth that they had already been taught. They were drifting downstream because they weren't growing in their faith. There was immorality among them. There was dishonesty. There was insincerity. There was bitterness and conflict. And they didn't even long for the pure spiritual milk of the Word of God anymore the way that they had once, once longed for it when they were first saved, when they first welcomed Jesus Christ into their lives. And perhaps like many in the church today, I gave you milk to drink, Paul reminds them in verse 2. I taught you the, the foundational truths, the, the fundamental things of our faith, and I taught you those things for 18 months. I didn't even give you solid food to eat. At that time, the, the deeper things of our faith, for you weren't able to receive those things, at that time, you weren't able to digest much spiritually, which is understandable, since a baby is a baby. But it has been almost five years since you were saved. Five years. And by now, you should have progressed beyond milk. It's a sad thing to see, isn't it? When a Christian who's known the Lord for many years, is still on milk, still lacking maturity after many years of knowing the Lord. But, Paul says, even now, you're not able to digest that solid food, the solid food of the faith, the solid food of the Word of God, because there's no spiritual growth in you. There's no depth. There, there's no maturity in your walk with Christ. Why? He says, because you selfishly choose to remain as infants. And the evidence of that sad reality can be seen in the pattern of your behavior, Paul tells them in verse 3. For you are still fleshly. You have the knowledge, yes. You have the gifts, yes. You have the teaching, yes. But you choose to ignore the truth. You have a self-centered attitude. For example, he says, you have an attitude of jealousy. Telos in Greek. It's an attitude of envy, an attitude of resentment among you. So... Are you not being led around by your emotions? 
and by your feelings instead of being led by the Spirit of God? It's a good question, isn't it? Perhaps a question we need to answer for ourselves. And Paul says this attitude can be seen, is evidenced in the strife that is among you, eris in Greek, in the quarrels, and in the disagreements that are in the fellowship. So, he says, are you not still fleshly? Are you not still worldly? Are you not walking and living like mere men, like those who are without Christ? Like men and women who are, are being influenced by the thinking of this world? For when you say, one of you says this, I'm of Paul. He started the church in Corinth and, and I follow him. I'll only listen to Paul. And, and then another one says, well, I'm of Apollos. Now, he's a gifted and a, an eloquent preacher. Uh, I'll only listen to him. Are you not acting like mere sinful men of this world, Paul asks? What then is Apollos? What then is Paul? Paul says in verse 5, we are just servants of God, diakonos in Greek. Not doulos, diakonos. We are just laborers. We are like those who wait on tables. We're like those who scrub the floors. We're just instruments. We're just vessels through whom God has chosen to work. A channel of God through whom you believed. Even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one of us the opportunity to serve him at the right time, in the right place, according to the plan of God. So why would you elevate the servant above the Savior? Your eyes are focused in the wrong place. Take your eyes off us. Get your eyes on him. But Paul adds this. He says it is true, verse 6, that I, I planted the seed of the word of God there in Corinth. And it is also true that Apollos watered that seed, giving you sound biblical teaching. But it is also true that it was God who was causing the growth in you. He is the one who saved you. He is the one who worked in your hearts. So give the glory to him for your salvation. Not to us, because, Paul adds in verse 7, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything by comparison to God, because it is God who causes the spiritual growth. He is the one who has brought about that miracle in your life, not us. Well, we are to appreciate those who labor among us, aren't we? We are. We're to value them. We're, we're to encourage them, their gifts to the church. But we are only to give the glory and the honor and the worship to God, to Christ. Now, Paul tells the people in the church in Corinth, in verse 8, he who plants and he who waters, they are one. We work together for the glory of the kingdom of God. That is what the church is supposed to be like, isn't it? We are supposed to be in harmony. We're supposed to be in unity. We are supposed to, to have singleness of mind, swimming upstream together, side by side. And so Paul says, then each one of us will receive his own reward from God in heaven, not from men on this earth. An eternal reward, he says, according to the 
our, our own labor, kopos in Greek, uh, according to our toil, according to our trouble and difficulties, according to our faithfulness as we swim upstream. As it says in Revelation eleven eighteen, there will be a reward to the small and to the great, to those of us who belong to Christ and who have lived for him and who have served him with all our heart. We are God's fellow workers, Paul reminds the people in the church in Corinth in verse 9, sunergos in Greek. We labor alongside of him as we labor alongside of each other. And you are God's field. Georgian in Greek, you are a cultivated field. You're a garden, the garden of God, which he is nourishing. We're just laborers in that garden. You are God's building, a building that he is constructing day by day, working in your lives. We're just workers in that building that's under construction. He's the architect of the building, not us. He's the architect of our salvation through Christ Jesus our Lord. So what about you? What about me? We don't want to be like those who are forgetful hearers, do we? So those of us who belong to Christ need to ask ourselves this question. Are we swimming upstream? Or are we drifting downstream? And that is a question that each of us must answer for ourselves before our Lord. Amen. listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Borean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.